The horrifying entity we encounter in Chapter 3 is the nightmarish Huggy Wuggy who emerges out of a TV when playing a tape, which relentlessly chases after the protagonist and consumes him. This luckily turns out to be resulted from the effects of the red smoke produced from catnap, which is said to induce nightmares and hallucinations, something the protagonist has to wear a gas mask in order to protect himself from further hallucinations and to keep his sanity. But it seems as if the red smoke doesn't always create a specific monster, the nightmarish Huggy Wuggy. But instead, the way the red smoke affects people is that it specifically forms the scariest monster for each victim. In the tape we hear how a child affected by the red smoke, a child called Marie, sees a colorless monster, or in other words, a transparent monster which haunts her and makes her scream from the top of her lungs, leading to her requiring medical attention as if getting a heart attack from fear. For the protagonist, however, he specifically sees a distorted Huggy Wuggy for some reason. It can be said that at first he was transparent, but eventually coming fully out of the TV, he changed into his normal color and was fully visible. Also, Huggy Wuggy was a prominent character in the factory, so the kids would surely know about him. So if Marie would happen to see Huggy Wuggy, she would have no problem identifying him, but instead she said that she saw a colorless monster. All right, Miss Harper, please explain the situation. Spare no detail. Well, like any night, all the children were kept asleep. It was peaceful, quiet. Catnap had the red smoke in the room. Then suddenly, there was this scream. Nightmares happen, I know, but this, I mean, dilated pupils and quivering lips. The way her eyes darted around the room, and I swear, her hand in mine, it felt like her blood was boiling beneath her skin. She saw something, too. Something horrible. She... I, I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to. Miss Harper, we'll provide the very best care we can offer. You have my word. But this is important. Did Marie happen to describe what she saw? Yes. A monster, she said, said that it was colorless. Gosh, I could feel the poor little heart pounding. For her, it was right there. A and her movements, they were so wild. Arms flailing, legs kicking. Hmm. I, I wanted to talk to her, see how she's doing. I, I just, I really need to hear her voice right now. That would not be advised, Miss Harper. There are many concerns we must address at this time. But vital, show normal, and we'll continue to monitor. She'll be okay. No! Well, pardon me if I'm not comforted by that. <laughs> Just bring my little girl back to me. <laughs> so what's the reason behind the protagonist seeing Huggy Wuggy instead of the colorless monster? And why no other monster or vision? Well, it has something to do with his conscience or what he feared the most. But listening to the surreal tape, it reveals much more information to why the protagonist would hallucinate a horrifying version of Huggy. Greetings, employees, and welcome to your first day here in Playtime. We're certain that in the days to come, you'll find your new family here every bit as loving and supportive as your own. Feel free to wander the halls sit in the mess for lunch, or watch our children play and learn to their little hearts' content. Join the innovationists where the bounds of science are continuously pushed, or join the counselors of play care whose diligence and care for our children will help shape a brighter future. Just you see. Now, every one of you has your part in that future, so should you come back tomorrow feeling unhappy for where you are, or what you've done, Worry not, for your supervisor is here and happy to listen. And, should you come back years later, your conscience finally getting the better of you, may you descend into the dark and the dust, finding all that awaits you are incomprehensible horrors, each hungry for your return, each eager that they might find you. Perhaps they'd smile at you from a shadow, their smiling mouths full of teeth and meat and plastic. 
watching and waiting patiently for their turn at a warm welcome. Or perhaps they won't allow you such time to figure your place in the world you'd left. A world that's theirs now. The tape at first seems like an introduction to the factory for new employees, but soon it takes a more sinister turn when the audio goes on a questionable monologue, directly speaking with the protagonist about him getting back to the factory years later, indicating he left many years before the hour of joy, seeing the results of his actions and his guilt catching up to him. The tape directly confronts the protagonist of his past actions and what they led to, leaving a place full of horrors and monsters. Monsters that were vulnerable children, still being children trapped in bodies that they cannot control, tormented with never-ending hunger, pain, trauma, resentment, and much more. We even find sentences etched on the floors in the imaginary maze-like corridors of how guilt haunts the protagonist, which could potentially mean that he feels guilty for killing the dolls even though he had no other choice. After all, the dolls are children who know nothing better and have been subjected to so much pain and trauma, experiencing something no one can ever imagine in their worst nightmares. Therefore, in a way, the protagonist might sympathize with them and understand where their pain and misery comes from, with their retaliatory response and actions being justified to some degree. It's not clear if the protagonist directly was involved in the experiments or knew about them, but whatever it is, he seems to be someone who feels remorse and guilt for what happened to the children and what they have become. It seems as if the protagonist has a heart and it pains him seeing the children as such, manipulated and unhappy, always hungry and essentially turned into monsters. Maybe he didn't directly participate in the experiments, but his lack of action made him feel guilty. Maybe the reason for him leaving the factory years before was due to finding out the organization intends to perform experiments and it was something he couldn't bring himself to accept participating in. But maybe his lack of action left him regretful. Also, if we look at all the battles and face-offs that he had with the mascots and dolls, he didn't directly harm or kill any of them, but they all became entangled with the environmental hazards and died. The very first mascot he encounters, Huggy Wuggy, falls to the ground, presumably dying. Mummy Longlegs gets trapped in the grinding machine after a chase and dies. Miss Delight gets trapped in a security gate and dies due to trying to squeeze through and finally, shooting Catnap with the electric hand only incapacitated him and didn't kill him. Also the smiling critters were only scared off by the flare gun, including the whack awoggies who were just scared off. So the protagonist didn't seem to want to kill any one of these dolls, but was left with no other choice to scare them off or deter them, and at times using greater measures to incapacitate them in order to save himself. But regardless, it seems the death of the mascots that he was indirectly responsible for haunts him and makes him feel guilty. One of the mascots he felt the most guilty of was Huggy Wuggy, who couldn't even speak and was used like an exhibition piece to stay steady, used for display, despite going through a tragic experiment losing his humanity. So it's very likely, apart from finding Huggy as the scariest mascot which traumatized him the most, he feels the most guilty about Huggy. If you think about it, maybe the protagonist felt the most guilty about Huggy Wuggy's death because maybe he was in some way linked to him or him becoming this monstrosity. Huggy Wuggy is one of the oldest mascots in the Playtime co-history and correspondingly one of the earliest experiments known as Experiment 1170. Huggy was debuted in 1984, being one of the oldest, being one of the major dolls that gave Playtime Co. its reputation. Coincidentally, the protagonist also left working for Playtime Co. around the same time, seemingly, several years before its mysterious closure and the Hour of Joy incident. So, maybe, the protagonist somehow knew the person experimented on to become Huggy Wuggy and personally felt guilty for not stopping the experiment from being performed. Maybe, even worse, he had some sort of involvement in it. 
It's unlikely that he fully knew about the experiments and actively participated in it, because otherwise he wouldn't know about the constant attempts the mascots made to escape and their hostile natures. And knowing that, he would presume that they probably broke free or hurt the employees, and he wouldn't step foot back in the factory to expose himself to danger. It also seems finding the many living dolls in the factory and how empty it was came as a shock, something that he didn't expect. Therefore, uh, if any, his involvement in the experiments was minimal, but enough for him to feel guilty and hallucinate about Huggy Wuggy after inhaling the red smoke. He felt so bad about Huggy's death that he was tormented by his reincarnation in a horrifying manner, with an imaginary monologue confronting him and blaming him for returning years later to find the fruit of his actions and what horrors and monsters have been left behind. Strangely, he also has visions of radio announcements about the discovery discovery of a mutilated corpse of a child in Elliot Ludwig's property, which leads to the legacy of Playtime Co. getting stained forever. If he wasn't in the factory anymore during the later lifespan of the factory, he probably followed the news about it and heard about the gruesome finding on the radio. Maybe he had a major role in the factory, but not knowing much about the head and sinister actions behind closed doors, which he still felt guilty about, feeling as if he got his hands dirty and facilitated such actions. Either way, it's clear he has some sort of close link to Huggy Wuggy and hence why he was tormented by his vision after inhaling the red smoke, followed by the confrontational monologue. It's probably no coincidence as well that his departure from the factory coincided with the creation date of Huggy Wuggy. So it's very possible that he somehow learned about the experiments taking place and Huggy Wuggy being a result of them. Hence why he left and felt guilty for not being more involved in it to stop. Anyway, what are your thoughts about it? Why did the protagonist specifically hallucinate Huggy Wuggy and not any other mascot? Someone like Mummy Longlegs who had a much more brutal ending. He somehow felt more guilty about Huggy Wuggy. So what do you think? Let me know down in the comment section below. As always, it's been your host Dar, and I will see you on the next video. Take care.